Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming. A show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. Now, on my last episode, I had mentioned that I might do, or I was leaning towards doing Asia and Golf for my next episode, but I gotta be honest with you, I set it up on the table, and I don't know if I'm reaching the end of my Pacific Theater Warfare World War II wave, as it were, but um, I just didn't want to play it. I'm not sure why. I don't know if this happens to you guys or not, but um, yeah, that's kind of what happened. So what I decided to do was take a little step back um, and see maybe just need a little break, do some little like filler games um, to kind of break up the whole thing. Uh, because again, there are some other Pacific games I'm thinking about trying right now and I'm very curious about. So. One nice thing about some magazine games are is they do make nice filler games. Uh, they can be fast and furious. So the game I'm going to show you here today, as a result of all that, is one that comes from the Against the Odds Annual, which that says 2015 there, but actually didn't come out until 2017, Four Roads to Paris. Now, previously they had done one that was called Four Roads to Moscow, which I also own and enjoy uh, some of the games there. It's basically a quad game system. And this game I have set up here for you today is one of the games. It's a solitaire game. It's called Strange Victory, designed by Stephen uh, Cunliffe. So, what I'm going to do, as always, is just kind of jump in, give you a little overview, and let's get driving for the channel. Now, as you can see here from the map, the game board is divided up into different areas. You've got different letters there, and those letters there underneath those spaces there could be um, eh, lots of different things. They could be good things helpful to the Wehrmacht. They could be things that are Allied tanks or infantry units or things like that, or other unforeseen friction events, as it were. Now, the Germans begin way up here at the top. Okay, You've got uh, the three German, major German formations, uh, the core formations that were there, one, or division, actually, I think it's a division scale. Um, you've got, starting with the yellow over there on the left, you've got Rommel, and then you've got Guderian, and then you've got Reinhardt there. And basically, they are, as I mentioned, they are trying to get over to here, dashing for the channel ports. And if you look here, let's zoom in on one of those channel ports. Whoops. There's one. You can see there's a red victory point count there, too. And that goes towards uh, winning the game. Obviously, you want the most victory points possible. And there's a chart to compare with the outcome. Speaking of charts, let's look up here for a second. We have, let me come back out a little bit. We have a chart up here. This is basically technically called the OKW OK Panic chart. I like to call it the Hitler Nervous in the Service chart. So the chart there at the top there is one that measures just how nervous Hitler is getting. For those of you who know about the campaign in 1940, the Case Yellow campaign, um, Hitler of course got very nervous about his panzers, how they were racing ahead, and of course eventually the whole thing with Dunkirk, sparing the British, not attacking, etc. went on there. So this track is designed to show Hitler's nervousness and panic as it goes on. If the track ever hits 21, game automatically ends and you assess victory from there. Now the track underneath it is just a simple track to help you keep track of the allied strength of units as you enter different areas. The other area of the map I want to show you here real quick. We're going to drop down here and we've got these tracks here of, the, of our leaders. Uh, our leaders that again Reinhardt and Guderian and Rommel and basically these are audacity tracks. These points can be used for different things. You can um, help your units move, you can help them re-roll dice, things of that nature if you need to. The other thing here at the bottom is we have some star shell counters. Those are for counterattacks. Uh, the allies can manage to get their selves, themselves coordinated and strike back at you. And then the far side there, the campaign box, the campaign assets, those are things you can use to help yourself. Now those are the ones you start the game with. You might be able to pick some up as you go on through the conflict. So. Let's go ahead here, and again, we'll go over other rules, as always, as we move along. So let's go ahead and here, and I just always like to go left to right. So we'll go ahead and we'll start up here with the forces of Erwin Rommel, 
and then let me come back out a little bit there we go and we'll get moving from there one other thing i'd like to do too is as you can see there's uh, yellow green and black or gray for the uh different units there i usually like to use dice that match um and of course i always use a pile of dice because i never like to use the same die twice i don't know about the rest of you but that's what we'll do so technically the game begins with a refit basically a ready counter signal we've already done that so we'll talk about that toward the end of this video here um, so let's get straight into movement now movement is basically from area to area german units can normally move too however if they don't run into trouble or don't get themselves worn out that kind of thing we'll talk more about that in a minute then you can use either the commander's audacity point or you can use gas cans that you collect here as you drive through the area to get them to move a third space but third is as far as you can go so let's go ahead and let's get rolling here and we'll take Rommel's stronger force across the river let's flip this a unit and bam right off the bat we run into a three strength infantry unit now for combat it's pretty simple if you take a look here and let me go ahead and bring this um let me bring this a little bit closer let me see if i can make this work if you look here Maybe we can just totally zoom in. Let's try that. Again, I'm kind of learning, still learning this camera and stuff, so bear with me. Hey, there we go. That zoomed in pretty well. There. Okay, now as you can see on the top of the unit there, there are three dice. Now basically it tells you how many dice you can roll for the combat. Most units are two or three, unless they're on their exhausted resupply side. Combat is pretty straightforward. You roll a number of dice that's on there, and you're trying to get as many hits as you can by rolling the dice and the hits are scored by rolling equal to or greater than the defensive ability or the combat ability of the allied unit and here you can see it's a three so i could go ahead and just roll my three dice straight up i could use some of my campaign assets that i showed you just a little bit ago but i think what i'll do is let me go ahead and just try three straight up because we are talking about weak unit here oh and it was a good call i got a six and two fours now the combat results table pretty straightforward also it goes based on the number of hits now i just scored three hits so three hits all the allied counters are removed so that takes care of this infantry unit that was in the way they are now permanently removed from the game and the core commander so okay so it is core units um Oh, the units are division, but the commanders are core. Got it. Okay. Kick can gain one audacity point back. Well, I haven't used any yet, so that's kind of superfluous. So, good opening start to the combat. So let me back out here again a little bit. And let's continue. Whoops. After that unfortunate bump or earthquake there. Probably did feel like a bit of an earthquake to the French when they came rolling out of the Ardennes. Let's go ahead and move on here into this space and let's see what's in here. Our first victory point. Whoa! Holy smoke! Just ran into an 8 strength allied unit. Now that is huge. That is huge because if an allied unit ends up with a defense value of 7 or greater, it automatically becomes a combat result that's called a bloody firefight. And again, the thing you don't want to do here is get slowed down, take some losses, start to make Hitler nervous in the service. So now that I've got that issue there, let me go down here now and let's zoom in on these campaign assets. You know what, actually, let me go ahead and just bear with me here for a second. I'm just going to move the whole tripod. I think it's just going to be easiest. There we go. So that way you can see the picture straight on. So let me zoom in here a little bit more. And these are the campaign assets. Now, to start the game, you can see we have Stukas there, which are minus two. If I play one of those, it reduces the allied strength by two. There's guns, which basically are the feared 88s, give me an extra die and reduce the enemy unit. And then you have motorized infantry, which give me two extra ones. Now, the thing about the campaign assets is this. You can play more than one in a combat, but you can't play two of the same. So I couldn't I call in two Stuka strikes and try to pound this British armored unit down to oblivion. Uh, to go ahead and defeat them so what i think i will do though is because that's really really strong huh, it's unfortunate i hit something that strong here right at the beginning let's go ahead and let's bounce back over here Doo -doo -doo. up through the area there we go well i'm definitely going to use a stupa because i got to get that down some 
So I will reduce the Stuka. The Stuka will let me reduce them to six, but that's still really high. But gosh, I hate to burn through campaign counters that fast, but I think I'm gonna have to. So I'm also gonna use one of my guns and reduce them another step and get myself a fourth die as well. So here we go. I'm gonna roll four dice, trying to hit five or better. Okay, well, the one die decided to mutiny. I guess he was a little gun shy. But the other three, I gotta reroll that one. I got a six and two three, so that's only one hit so far. And I got another six. Now, I could go ahead with the two hits, or I could go for the third one here. Um, two hits, though, is, is always good. In this game, you want to be getting at least two to three hits on each attack that you do, because that keeps you moving. And again, speed is S of the essence. As Guderian said, only movement brings victory. So, let me look at the two hits here again. So the allied unit would be destroyed. Um, can move to a second area. Otherwise, it's over unless you use gas can. So I can still use my gas can or audacity if I went to do so. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'll take the two hit one there. That gets rid of that unit. And I'll go ahead and cross into Lille here. And again, um, some of these names, my French is not very good at all. I'll be completely honest about that. So if I butcher any of these, any, any of my French subscribers or watchers, I apologize. Uh, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And wow, look at this. Another heavy armored unit. A six this time. Gosh. Wow. <sighs> Now, question becomes, uh, do I want to need another asset already, or do I want to go ahead and try to just roll the dice? Literally. All right, I'm, I'm going to use one of my guns again. I'm going to reduce the strength of that German, or that allied armor. I'm going to take it down to five, and I will have four dice to use again. So let me see what I can do with that. Three hits, excellent. So three hits is another good thing for me. It devastates that unit at Lily. And now I will flip over to my resupply side. That's there. And that was the end for that unit's activation. So, so far so good, but I did have to use up a lot of combat units um, so that's not good okay well I have Rommel's other unit I can go with here yet too and we'll go ahead and we'll activate that as well so I'm gonna cross here into this spot and let's see what's there oh it's an infantry unit okay it's only got a value of two now the only modifier that there is to any of the allied units is if they're in a forested area and they're infantry have to be infantry uh, then they get their strength to double so two dice gotta get two or better let's see, go ahead and roll the dice five and a six so the unit is destroyed and removed from play i don't get slowed down so i'm going to go ahead and continue into here and we ran into some armor. Wow, I'm just running into, just not having a lot of good luck here being in this game with Rommel's forces and trying to get to the channel. Hmm, two dice, four better. That's gonna be tricky. But you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and be a little tricky here. I haven't had any major setback yet, so here we go. Ha, ah, six and a four, another two hits. Excellent, okay? So with those other two hits that I've managed to pull off here. I once again have defeated the allied unit and now I can go another move area if I want to. Now here's the thing too about movement. I can't go into, let's make sure I got both here, I can't go into here. You cannot move through another area on the game board map. Um, because of the French roads being so narrow and stuff there's no way to do it. So I can either end my movement here or I could plunge into this forested area. Whew, a forested area makes me a little nervous, but you know what? Fortune favors the brave. So I will reduce Rommel's audacity by one to get that third movement point. Ah! Now you might be wondering, what in the world am I complaining about? Well, let me show you. 
It's a breakdown counter. It's one of those friction things. Now, breakdown counters, here's the problem with them. Can't use any gas counters, can't do anything that, to help myself there. So, when it happens, the unit ends up with a counter that causes a lot of problems for you. And that is a shocked counter. So my unit's done moving. I flip it over to its resupply size. And here, you can see shocked, no move. So that basically means it's probably not going to be able to go anywhere next time. As a matter of fact, I know it won't be able to because one thing you can do later in the turn in the refit phase is you can go ahead, whoops, sorry, wrong direction. You can go ahead and use a leader's ability to refit it, but only if you use no audacity points by that leader for that turn. So that is a problem. Okay, well, we'll worry about that, I guess, when we get that far. So we are going to be slowed down a little bit up there with Rommel's forces. So let's go ahead here with Guderian, and we'll start Guderian's actions here by driving across the river and slamming into whatever's here at Ravine, maybe. Hey, 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 first positive one here. It's a gas counter. Now, gas counters are good because gas counters basically can do one of two things. Um, you can use the gas counter to get your units to move another space if you don't want to use audacity points, or they can be used to reduce the combat value of an enemy tank, only tank unit, by one. So that's a good start there for Guderian's strong force. Uh, let's see now. So let's, go, let's go into here. Let's take this five-point area head on. Oh, there's a two infantry unit, but remember, it will get doubled to four. So, do I want to use a campaign asset here? Um, you know what? No, I'm not going to. I'm going to rely on my three dice to do the job. Oh, that was a bad decision on my part. I rolled a three, a two, and a one. No hits at all. But, I can use Gadarian, and I can use him once, for a re-roll of any and all dice. So let me show you. Let me drop down here. So there you can see the leader charts again. I showed you those at the beginning of the video. Uh, Guderian, I've dropped him down by one. And notice I flipped it over. There's no more re-rolls. So I better hope this goes well. Otherwise, this could be a disastrous start to my campaign. So here we go again. Three dice. Need four better. This time I got two hits. Woo! Lucky me. So I will be able to defeat that unit there. And it won't slow me down, because it won't stop me. That's my second space. Now, I can use another Audacity Point by Guderian, or I could use my Gas Can. Well, I've already used Guderian, so I might as well go ahead and use another Audacity Point of his to keep rolling here. Ooh, I ran into some tanks. Yeesh, what is with all... Wow, I've never seen a game like this before, where the, where the Allies put all their tanks right out in the front line like that. Uh, hmm, Decisions. Well, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use my gas can marker, and I'm going to reduce that tank formation by one. We'll take it down to a three for defense. So, oh, I rolled a three, a two, and a one. Now, I can't re-roll, so that means only one hit. One hit is not good. One hit does remove the defending enemy unit, so that's the good news. Here comes the bad news. Hitler starts to panic, so the panic track has moved up to a two. There's more bad news yet to come. I also have to mark these guys with a disorder marker. Now, a disorder marker is a problem because when you have a disorder marker, you can only move one space next turn. And again, since I've already used Guderian's audacity points, I cannot use them again. So I cannot get those guys fixed here toward the end of this turn. So that's that. Now, I'm really going to have to be careful here with traffic jams. So let's go back up here to where Guderian's formations are again. And let's start moving across. So we go one, two. Let's see what's in this space here. Ah, oh, more infantry. And very strong infantry, too. As you can see, it's a three. But it's forced it, so they're going to get doubled to six. Dang it. All right, I've got no choice. I have to use one of my Stukas. 
So I'm going to use the Stuka, reduce them down to a four, and I've got three dice. I only got one hit again. Oh, Whew, this is not starting very well at all. So one hit, again, good news is no more enemy unit there. Bad news is, I'm done. Stick a fork in that unit. They get flipped, and now they get disordered. So they too, whew, that's not good. And there's one more panic step up too. So again, now we're up to the three track on the panic. Now the other problem here is, looking at the bigger picture, let's pull back a little bit. The bigger problem here now, as you can see, I got a lot of units sitting here and no place to go. I've got this last unit up here, Gadarians, that still has got to move through and remember I cannot go through a space that there's another unit in. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and move one space to here, two spaces to here, use another one of Gadarian's Audacity points and I'm going to move into this spot here hoping these guys are going to have better luck in their combats. Hey, look at that. They did. Okay, you can't see it. Now you can see it. They had better luck. They found a nice little recon marker. Now the recon markers are nice because recon markers will either, well they will give you an extra die and they let you bring back one of your starting um, assets. So not one that's used whenever you found, like what I found here on the map, but like one of the starting ones. So in other words, the Stukas, the guns, or the motorized infantry. Now that was the third space, so those guys get flipped, but hey, at least they're only flipped to the side where it's not going to be a big deal. Let's put it that way. Okay, time to get Reinhardt's men moving here. So Gadarian definitely had whew, a rocky start. Let's get Reinhardt moving. His first formation, running into an enemy unit, has a strength of two. Well, got two dice. I mean, I could use that recon asset. It's awfully early to use that. I'd rather save it for the forested area. Okay, let's just roll the two dice. Ah, good call. Two fives. So two fives is two hits. So bye-bye infantry unit. That place is secured. And now we'll plunge into the forested area and let's see what's there. Oh, wow. Ouch. Good thing I did save my campaign assets because whew, there is a six there. A six-string tank. Man. Never seen the Allies put their tanks off for forward here. I could use my guns. But you know what? I'm actually going to use this recon. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the Stuka back in. I'll get an extra die, so that will give me three dice to attack with. And I'm going to go ahead, and you can do this. You can go ahead and use the asset that you just brought back in, which is the Stuka, which will reduce them by two. So I've got three dice now, trying to get four or better. I got two hits. Okay, two hits is good. Two hits keeps us moving. Two hits doesn't make Hitler start to wring his hands and bite his fingernails, which by the way Hitler did do and the Germans consider that to be one of the worst habits that you can have because your fingernails touch everything and yeah so interesting little tidbit fact there. Alright now do I want to keep going? If I want to keep going I gotta use Reinhardt's Audacity. I've already got Guderian's core in a complete mess. Rommel's core is in a bit of a mess too but you know what? Fortune favors the brave so here we go. We're going into Mont Comer, I think, maybe. Hey, look at that. Fortune did favor the brave. It's a gas can. So I got a gas can marker. I'll add it back here, and these guys are now done, so they get flipped, whoops, to their tired side. All right, last unit then, here for this part of the turn, for the Germans anyway. Now, this last one I'm going to use basically to, let me go out here a little bit. I'm going to use it, whoops, oh, yeah, the Joker right. I'm going to go ahead and use it to go down the right-hand side of the map here and clear out all these spaces. Um, one of the things with the game is you do have to basically clear out all the spaces if you want to win because every single space gets you victory points. Um, that's one of the things that I find a little questionable about the game because the whole point was to dash for the channel. So why you have to waste time cleaning out some of these other spaces, I'm not sure. Now granted, it can be advantageous because, you know, there can be things like the recon counters and the gas can counters, but I just find it a little odd. That's my own personal opinion. I mean, I don't think it's a deal breaker or anything, but I just find it a little odd. So here we go. One space into here, into this heavily forested area, which contains 
Of course it contains infantry. We all knew that was going to happen, right? The way this opening turn is going. Whew. All right. So we do have infantry there. There will be a strength of four. <sighs> I could use one of my motorized infantry to get myself two more dice. You know what? I'll take my chances. Here we go. Oh, good call. I got boxcars. Two sixes. So, that will defeat that infantry unit and we can keep rolling. I will use another one of Reinhardt's audacity points and I will plunge into... I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Ho! Oh, good thing I didn't use one of my other things there. Because look at that. Here we go again with these tanks. The only good news about that is that should make the next part of this pretty quick to roll through because there can't be that many obstacles left. All right, I only get two dice. It's a five. So guns or motorized infantry, or I could use a gas can and drop them by one, but I don't know how much that helps. Let's use a motorized infantry. Give me two extra dice. So I'll have four dice to try and score hopefully at least two hits. Ooh, I only scored one. Well, that was a bit of a waste. But I do have one last audacity point left by Reinhardt. So I could use it and do a reroll. And you know what? I will. So that will take me down to no points left. I'll reroll three of the dice. <sighs> Didn't help. Four, three, two. Well, wow, that was a waste. All right. So one hit. One hit is bad. That's a pitched battle. So defeated the enemy. But the panic attack, the panic track, panic attack track, right, goes up by one. Reinhardt's men are finished, which that was the third space anyway. But the bigger problem is a disordered marker is now placed on them. Okay. So, well, that's no good. All right, and that's the end of the movement phase. So we've got a big old mess on our hands is what we've got. Let's zoom back here and let's take a look at the big picture here. So, so far on this opening turn, what we managed to do is, I mean, we busted through pretty well, but the problem is we've got one, two, three, four units, half of our units, more than half of our units, there's seven counters all together, that are going to be only moving one space or no spaces next time. <sighs> Well, to quote the dude, that's a bummer, man. So, we'll have to deal with it. Now, next phase on this turn, as I go through this sample turn here, is the counterattack phase. Now, the counterattack phase, that's where these... Let me go ahead and zoom in here. That's where these little star shell-looking guys come in. You find a unit on the map, a German unit, that... And, again, this is a little odd, but you pick a random unit that... German units that's not disordered or shocked, which you would think you would want to attack the ones that are disordered or shocked, but okay. So it's going to have to be this one up here. There's only one unit. It has to be in a B or C space. I'm sorry. It has to be in a space that's B or C. So most of my units, remember, were basically in, whoops, wrong direction. We're in the A space. So they're not eligible. But the one unit that is eligible, we'll zoom in on them here. The one unit that is eligible is up here in Lille. Not that one. This one. Right there. Okay, so now you just randomly pick one counter from the Star Shell crew. I'm going to pick this one and I will reveal it to you as I get to see it myself. Ready? Steady. Go. Oh, that's bad news. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. It's a six value tank. Ooh. That's bad. There we go. I was wondering why everything suddenly got blurry. There we go. Now we're looking better. Oh my goodness. And as you can see with defense there, I've only got two dice. Yikes. Um. Gosh. Wow. This is bad. Um. I may have to use my guns. Because if I use my motorized, it really doesn't help me any because I'm only getting two extra dice, but I still got to get sixes. At least if I use my gun, I get one more dice, and I need five or six. And if I don't, then this counterattack is going to be bloody awful. It's going to be an awful, awful mess. Ooh. Well, 
See, the problem is getting back these campaign assets is not the easiest thing in the world either. However, I haven't used Rommel's reroll. That's true. I'm still going to use the gun. Let me get my. Let me bring up my 88s. So that will reduce the defense factor of the enemy, and that will give me one extra die here. So I will have three dice, and I do have Rommel's reroll available. So I'll, that's good news. Whew, and I'm going to need it. I rolled a three, a two, and a two. Yikes. That could not be any lousier. So now the bad news is, if I hadn't... Well, no. Actually, I had already used an audacity point for my mold as it was. So let's try this again. Okay, well, the good news is, the reroll was worth it. I got two sixes, which destroys the counterattack. And I won't end up with any increase in the panic. And I won't end up with any kind of disorder marker either. So... That's that. Okay. So that threat is done. Let's zoom back out. Over here. There we go. Okay. Now we'll go on to the repair segment. Okay. Now repairs can only be done if the core commander did not use any audacity points. Well, all my guys used audacity points. So that's that. However, if they hadn't, they would be able to eliminate one of the disordered markers or the shock markers that their formation, one of their formations has um, had inflicted on it. And you cannot use, like, Rommel to help Darien's forces. You can't cross or contaminate, for lack of a better way to put it. I don't know what else to put it. Cost assist? Cross assist? I don't know. Something along those lines. So anyway, so, no doing there. Now, on the coast. Let's go over here to the coast. On the coast now, we are going to roll to see where do we put... One of the coastal defense forces. It's a two. So I choose from over here. Let me go down here. From over here, I choose one of these forces, and I'm going to put it in the space that has the two, which is up here at Gravelines. Seems to be the name. So that's the coastal area for there. Capturing a port, we don't have to worry about because I don't have anything there. The panic say the panic track goes up one no matter what. So there it goes up to a five. And now we're ready to well there's the game end check segment, but there there's the game's not ready to end because the panic counter has not reached the 21st box. Otherwise, the only other way it ends is if all the ports are in German hands. And none of that has happened yet. So let's move back here to the quote-unquote start of the turn and we'll do all the refitting here real quick and then I'll go ahead and close this video because that gives you an idea of a whole turn plus a little extra so to speak as well so ready encounters so anybody on this resupply side is now going to be flipped over to its advancing side now of course the ones that have the shock and all that they're gonna keep that and that will come into play here once I get ready to move everybody again. So, I got a lot of issues here. Because I've got a lot of formations and I'm going to move one space this next time. And if we get some bad combat results, that's going to be an issue. And then the other thing you do during the refit phase is you flip the commander's uh, markers to their picture size if you need to and increase their audacity values by one. But never by more than the highest value on the track. So we'll come down here. And let's zoom in real quick. So there they are. So Reinhardt will go up to one. He needed flipped. Guderian also needed flip will go to two. And then Rommel also needing flipped will go up here to four. And now we're ready to move again. And that basically gives you one entire turn of this game. Now, the rest of the game, once you start moving and rolling through and the spaces decrease, things start to pick up speed. Um, as you can see, it's a very easy game to learn. It's not very hard at all. Uh, there's only, uh, let's see what, five pages of rules, six pages of rules altogether. Uh, but again, it is a very fun game. It's a fast and furious game. And it's not a game that requires a whole lot of you know, strategy or decision making, but um, you know, there are key moments when you gotta decide how to use your assets. So I like that, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so it's a nice, for me, it's a nice like filler game. Whenever I wanna take a step back and I wanna play a game, but I can't decide, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been doing Pacific Theater, do I wanna jump to like the Eastern Front or do I wanna jump all the way back to Ancient Rome? Hey, I need a little time to think about that. 
this is a great filler game uh, for that purpose. It's easy to set up and tear down. You can see the footprint is very small. Um, even with the dice and everything else, it's a very small footprint. Um, it takes just a few minutes to set up. You have to mix up the counters and stuff. Uh, the only thing that I wish the game had come with, to be honest, was more counters than you needed for the allies. So that way you'd always have a little bit of uncertainty. Because as the game plays right now, you know at some point, hey, like right now I know, I just had a horrible turn fighting units, but I know there's more recon and gas counters out there. So I know that it's going to get a little easier as it goes. So if there had been more counters than spaces available, like for say the letter A and B and stuff, I think that would have added more replayability to the game. Um, now, since I don't, you know, I'm not any kind of great game designer or anything, I haven't tried to make my own counters and try to come up with extra things because I don't want to throw the balance off. But that would have been really cool if that if that had been available with it. So I'll go ahead and leave here with this. Um, I probably won't come back to this. This is probably my only video for the game because I think it gives you a good idea how it plays. You got to see an entire turn. I got to see just about everything too. Um, the only thing really that's left to, to see that you didn't get a chance to see is what happens when you get over here to the channel ports. And here I'll zoom in on the one because we have this situation now. And when you get two counters in there, then you really got to have those higher combat results. Because once you get two counters in here, like we have here at Gravelines, if you don't get that, you're, you're really going to be bogged down. And, and it's really going to be... Um, kind of nasty. So overall I would say this. Um, I really do enjoy this game as a filler game. It is a lot of fun as both filler and solitaire game. So if you like the 1940 Case Yellow campaign, uh, if you like solitaire games that are quick and, and move fast, uh, I would recommend this. The other games in the set, I'll be honest, I've only played two of the four. I also play Springtime for Hitler, which is an area impulse game. So if you know games like uh, Storm Over Arnhem or Breakout Normandy, or uh, Thunder at Casio, or what's the one I'm forgetting? There was four of them, Turning Point Stalingrad. Those kind of games, um, uh, Monty's Gamble, I think, also falls into that category. If you like those kind of area movement games, then you would also probably enjoy Springtime for Hitler. I haven't tried the other two just yet. Uh, at some point, I probably will. But um, France, the French campaign is one of those ones that it's, it's interesting, but... I don't know, it's just it's not necessarily my cup of tea uh, as far as getting really detailed. I've never gotten into the French campaign in as much detail as, say, like the Eastern Front of World War II, which is one of my favorite topics of all time, both to read about and game about. I have about, last count, I have somewhere like 75 books on the Eastern Front and about 50 games on it, so it's definitely a huge part of my collection. So, uh, again, hope you enjoyed this playthrough, so to give you an idea whether you think you'd like this game or not. Up next, once, and I'm not sure when I'll film this, once I get through some um, what I call clunker plays. I always call the first couple plays, when you're learning the rules, I call them clunker, because it just feels like, you know, you're feeling around in the dark, you know, <laughs> trying to find a flashlight when the power went out. So the next game that I'm going to, per request of one of my subscribers, is going to be Mrs. Thatcher's War. And I will be curious to see how this plays, because one of my favorite solitaire games, and I usually pull out about once a year, is Where There Is Discord, which also covers the Falkland Islands as well. So it would be interesting to me to see what Mrs. Thatcher's War is like. Um, it's the third of a series of games done by... Oh, I forget the designer's name. Um, ben Madison. Um, he also did End of the Napoleonic Wars and Don't Tread on Me. I have both of those. I've enjoyed both of those. Uh, although I've played End more than I've played Don't Tread on Me because I'm not a big American Revolution war game kind of guy. I only have, I think I only have two games to cover the American Revolution. I Don't Tread on Me and I have Washington's War. And you know what? I think that's it. So, so anyway, so next episode I'll be going over Mrs. Thatcher's War, a game that came out last year. I'll give you an idea again, just like I've been doing before playthroughs, immersive process, so you can see how it plays and see if you'd like to pick it up and if it's your cup of tea or not. And again, uh, if you're interested or you would like to request me to play any games, feel free to go to my welcome video and in the comments section there, you know, just go ahead and list the game that you would like to see me play. If I have it, I'll be more than happy to play it unless, I'm going to be honest, unless it's a game that I loathe and is like on the trading block, so then I might 
not play it because then I might end up with an ulcer or something like that. So anyway, to finish off this episode here, this is Tim Korchnoi from Bare Bones Wargaming wishing you victory and fun in your games and I will see you next time when we do a playthrough uh, sample turn of Mrs. Thatcher's War. See you then.